Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from the UK. Today is Tuesday, it is the 23rd of February 2021 and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Um, this is a knitting podcast, so if you're watching for the very first time, I really, really hope that you'll enjoy it. And if you are coming back or maybe you've even been following me for a long time, thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. This is actually my second time trying to record this podcast because I am here with my six month old uh, co-host, um, but he has now fallen asleep. So I think it will just make it much easier for me to focus. And I know that you guys find it funny when he makes his little noises and pops into the screen, but it is quite hard for me to focus and make sentences in a way that makes sense. So today we have some finished objects and some works in progress and possibly some chatter at the end. It just kind of depends on how long this one here sleeps. So I will talk about this FO first because it tends to blow out the camera and I don't necessarily like how the lighting works with this in the frame. And then I will do a quick outfit change. So this is my finished straps sweater by Andrea Maori. I think it is originally written for a different weight, but I just used fingering weight yarn. I used some yarn by Ching Fibers that I got at the Oslo Stricker Festival two years ago. And um, the two colorways that I used are Spirit and A Flame. And I used less than two skeins each. So I just did, as you can probably tell, two color stripes. And I really, really like how the sweater turned out. It is knit at a very loose gauge for a fingering weight yarn. Um, and it is kind of sweatshirt sort of style, which I really, really like. I did pretty fitted, three quarter length sleeves. So if you don't know, I tend to make up my own sort of sleeve shaping, waist shaping, all of that on my sweaters because I know what I like. So I just keep doing that. Um, and yeah, it is just, it's very relaxed. And I think especially now, um, as we're heading into warmer weather, it is really nice to have these sort of light super wash sweaters that you can just chuck on and they're easy to, to take care of, they're not terribly warm, so they're just a nice sort of layering piece. So I am very, very happy with this. In real life, this color is a tiny bit less bright and a bit darker, so it is still, of course, it's a rather flash, a flashy sort of flashy, not flashy. It is a rather colorful sweater, but it is not as neon as it usually comes across on the screen. So I will do a quick outfit change and be right back. All right, another finished object that I have is actually a hat. So where did this come from, you may ask? Well, I've been working on my colorwork beast of a sweater, which I'll talk about in a second. And I just need a break. I just need a break from that. And I didn't have my socks handy. So I decided to grab some yarn from Stash that was already caked up because I did cake up quite a bit of yarn when I was pregnant, knowing that it would be difficult to wind yarn once baby was here, which was a correct assumption. Um, so the yarn that I had caked up were 350 gram skeins of this yarn, which is Peary by Brooklyn Tweed. My first time knitting with this yarn. Uh, it is a fingering weight yarn, so I had three skeins of a fingering weight and I decided to knit a hat. So this is a ribbed hat and some of you may think that's crazy that I consider a ribbed hat to be relaxing, but I actually like knitting a bit of rib every now and then. And this is just literally one by one rib over, I think, 74 stitches. I held the yarn double. And I was going for a bit of like a color block effect and I really like it and it was really fun to do. I'm not going to mess up my hair and put this on, but I, I'm sure you can get the idea. So it's a very sort of relaxed slouchy beanie hat. And what you could do is of course you can fold it over and have a bit more of a fitted hat as well. So originally I was planning to do sort of sort of matchy matchy family hats, but hats that obviously belong together. And I think this yarn is very, very soft. It's very sort of squishy. It has a bit of a luxurious, but like commercial feeling to it, which I really like. It's a very round yarn. Um, 
but I showed this hat to Kai and he didn't think this was soft at all. So it's always really interesting how subjective like the softness of a yarn can be to different people. So he didn't want a hat. But of course, you know me. I know I, I love a bit of tackiness. So I decided to knit a matching baby hat. So again, I didn't use a pattern um, and I'm not going to write this up by the way. But I am doing a ripped hat for baby and I decided to do some ear flaps. So I hope you can see here, I just made this up, did some ear flaps and then joined the whole thing in the round and I'm doing another ripped hat. So this is where I used up the leftovers of this sort of, I guess it's like a brownish, brownish gray or grayish brown. And now I'm just going to use my red for the top of the hat. And then the third color that I have, I think I'm just going to use for a completely different project. I don't really want to start putting that in right now. But how cute is that? I mean, I really, really love it. I think especially the baby hat will only look really great once it's blocked and possibly on a baby. But yeah, this was just a bit of fun. Um, and by holding the yarn double, using 3.5 millimeter needles, I was able to just whisk this up uh, relatively quickly, which is also not a bad thing. So I'm using up stash and I'm really enjoying myself while I'm doing that. I've also been working a little bit on my socks. So you may remember I am using some earth yarns in their Unique sock base, um, colorway number 59 if you're interested. Um, it comes in little ready-to-knit bowls like this. Um, it comes in a really pretty box with the label and everything, but I don't have the box anymore. <laughs> but here you go. So it comes like this, and because it comes in two 50 gram bowls, I decided to knit these socks two at a time. So here we are. Um, I started toe up, and last time I showed this to you, I think I was about halfway done with the feet. And I have since put in the fish lips kiss heels and I'm just working up the leg now. So these are going to be using up all of the yarn that I have. So I think they'll be almost knee high sort of socks, which I'm really excited about because I think it'll look really fun with like black or gray leggings. And also I just want to be using up this yarn because this is definitely on the fancier side of sock yarns. Um, and I really, really love them. I think they're very fun and it's very fun to be progressing into these different colors and yeah, I can't imagine these ending up with the purple and everything towards the top of them. So I think it'll be very, very fun to just keep working on these every now and then. But I haven't been working on these a ton. I've been mainly actually knitting on these while on my zoom spinning meeting which is a very new addition to my life and i'm enjoying it very much so hi you guys if you're listening um and then the last thing and possibly the most exciting thing unless you're sick of it as i am is my sweater beast this is the vanna pullover by kit couture which is a danish knitwear kit company I guess so they have these designs that you can only I think get if you buy the kits with their own yarn and this is as I said the Vanna pullover um, and I have finished working on the body and have now finally joined the sleeves to it so I've done about four to five inches of the body and then I have attached the sleeves which it all looks a bit funky now because they have just been attached and this took so much brain power, you guys. Um, especially because the pattern for the sweater, which is a relatively complex design, the pattern, I don't have it with me, but it is basically just one small page of instructions. So it is a very typical sort of Scandinavian or even sometimes German patterns that tend to be very, very short not like the patterns that you get from indie designers where it's a plain stockinette sweater and you have like 20 pages of instructions um which i actually like the short instructions i like that they're very sort of on the point 
but to get the pattern to match up on the raglan increases at, or decreases in this case isn't very easy and that's where this pattern does disappoint a little bit because I think depending on the sizing that you need, uh, so the different sizes, depending on where you are in your chart, it is not always possible to make uh, the pattern match up completely. So I could go into a lot of technical details here, I'm not going to, except to say that I did modify it a little bit because I want at least the front of the body to be matching up with the raglan lines that you will see in the end. And so yeah, I modified it, I have different numbers of stitches on the front and the back of the sweater now, which is not a terrible thing, it'll be fine. But it did take some brain power and now I just, I just really hope for the best. I now need to um, establish my raglan decreases and figure it all out. And I think whatever happens now, I'm just going to keep going. If it's not 100% perfect, no one besides me will ever really know. So here we are, um, ever since joining it, I haven't touched it, but I'm starting to feel like I can work on this again, which is good. So I just need to finish the yoke and then this will be done. And that sounds really easy, but it is over 500 stitches on essentially sock needles. These are 2.5 millimeter US size, one and a half needles. So it will still take some time, but it is nice to be able to somehow see the finish line. And only 18 rows to go and then I can join my white yarn and I can't wait to just be knitting with a different color. So there we go. And that is what I've been working on these, I don't know, what has it been? Past 10 days or so. So this is it for the yarny knitting content in terms of what I've been working on. But we have one exciting thing to talk about, and that is our knit along. So last week I asked you guys whether you were interested in potentially doing a knit along for my latest pattern, which is the Smoky Cables sock pattern, which I will link below. And I was so excited to see that quite a few of you were keen to do that. So what I've decided to do is to have a knit along not only for the smoky cable socks but actually for all of my sock patterns because I have quite a few out there now and again I will provide links to everything down below. I only have my three most recent patterns um, on Payhip so if you're interested in purchasing the other ones off Payhip rather than Ravelry do let me know and I will transfer them there. It is just a question of finding the time to do so. And you will find all of them also in my Ravelry pattern store. So what we're doing, I decided, is we will call it the Happy Socks Co. Because it is the Happy Knitting Podcast. So it just makes sense. So we will use hashtag Happy Socks Co. So Co as in K-A-L on uh, Instagram. Um, and you can knit any or all of my sock patterns. Um, and we will run this until the end of April. And my little co-host is awake. Hello. Hello. Uh, there he is. Um, sorry, whenever he does anything, I just lose all kinds of focus. So happy socks Cal on Instagram. I will eventually also do a Ravelry thread for those of you who are interested. But I think the main bulk of the knit along will just be on Instagram because that is more accessible. And it's just it's just fun to follow the hashtag on Instagram and see where it goes. So just pick whatever yarn you feel like. Let me know what you're going to do with what yarn and so on in the comments below as well. I would be really, really interested to hear about your plans. I'm planning to do a faded version of my cozy cables. Ah, uh, cozy cables, smoky cables socks. Um, I was going to call it Cozy Cables first, but apparently a million other people already came up with that pattern name for their patterns, so that's where that comes from. Um, so I'm going to do a faded version, which I think should be really fun. I've been seeing some sort of more colorful variations of my um, Smoky Cables pattern as well pop up on Instagram, which has been incredible. So choose whatever you want to do in terms of yarn, in terms of any of my sock patterns. It does need to be a sock pattern. 
and I think we will run it until the end of April, so you have over two months to knit a pair of socks. And if you don't finish, who cares? It's all about just having some fun and knitting some socks. And I will sort out some kind of prize package. So if you are a maker who wants to donate a prize, please do get in touch. And otherwise, I will just figure something out myself, which is absolutely fine. Um, and I will do a coupon code um, for both Payhip and Ravelry. So if you use the coupon code um, Happy Socks Cal, Happy Socks K A L, you will get ten percent off my sock patterns. So yeah, thank you so much for joining in with that. And just generally, I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who have been supporting my pattern designing, um, whether it's been lately or whether it was a while ago. I just wanted to mention it because I feel like I um, I love knitting and I love designing, but I'm not very good and I just don't enjoy um, the whole marketing and social media marketing and all of the sort of businessy things that go on behind the scenes. I'm not very good at them and I don't know, I just, I just hate like algorithms and all this stuff and I want my Instagram and I want my YouTube account to be about my knitting and about my authentic self rather than about selling stuff and doing all of that so you may have noticed that I hate the whole social media marketing with inventions I hate algorithms I hate telling people to subscribe and do all these things because you can do whatever you want <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I am not super super grateful for everyone who decides to purchase one of my patterns show their progress um, it just brings me so much joy and it does make a difference so a huge thank you to all of you guys who have been supporting me in one way or another it really is making a difference and doing a lot for me for us and for my happiness all right so that is it for the nitty content of this show in terms of what's been going on outside of knitting it is becoming a bit more spring-like which is great it is so nice to have the sun out we went for a lovely walk today which is just amazing and with it being warmer it's also just so much easier to get out with the baby and just pop him in the thing and off we go um we can do a bit more stuff although of course doing stuff is difficult right now but like popping down to the store is to quickly get a piece of cake for takeaway stuff like that is a lot easier when you don't have to bundle baby into a million outfits and winter things and all of that um yeah that's basically what's been happening um so i think i'm going to leave it at that as someone is now awake quiet but awake and i think he needs some cuddles so thank you so much for joining me today. I will talk to you very soon. A happy knitting. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next week. Bye.